Now we will talk about next question children and the next question number is answer number 13. So, we will talk about answer number 13. And what this uh, question is, do all the stars in the sky move explain? Just now we have discussed that the uh, earth is moving from west to east. That is the reason it appears that the stars are moving from east to west. Yes, but in uh, uh, case of pole star as it is just above the axis of rotation of the earth in the northern sky, it does not seems to move it seems to be stationary. So, uh, uh, where it is to all do all these stars in the sky move explain. So, what will be the answer for the student that no these stars do not move no the stars do not move. Then why does it appear children? So, what will be the answer for this? So, as the earth rotates as earth rotates from west to east hence the stars appears to move from uh, east to west. Yes and in case of pole star if we talk about pole star, but as pole star is situated just above the axis of rotation in the northern hemisphere hemisphere it appears to be stationary it appears to be stationary. Hope this is very clear to you all because this we have discussed many a times that our earth is rotating from west to east and so as we are sitting in the train and we see out it will what will be the uh, like what uh, impression will it give it will uh, we get from that. Uh, we will feel that the other things which are there on the platform and the platform will move in the opposite direction to us. So, as earth is rotating from west to east, so it gives an impression that the, the stars are moving from east to west. So, this is about the answer number 13. Now, we will talk about the answer number 14. So, what is the question? Just I will go through the question children. Why is the distance between stars expressed in light years? We know that why it is expressed in light years because the distance between the two, say any two celestial body is very high. The distance is very uh, high and so it cannot be calculated in kilometers or any kind, any such kind of uh, units. And so the bigger unit has to be taken. Light year is the bigger unit. What is the meaning of light year? One light year is equal to one uh, like the distance travelled by light in one year which is a huge distance is not it. What is the second part of the student what do you understand by the statement that a star is 8 light years away from the earth. So, we will finish this uh, first of all what is the first part that why is the distance between stars expressed in light years. So, as the distance between any two heavenly body is great is very 
hi so can't be calculated can't be calculated in kilometers or any such unit yes and one light year is equal to how much children one uh, i'll just write over there what is the meaning of light year one light year is equal to what children one light year is equal to the distance traveled by the light in one year so one light year is equal to distance travel in one year distance traveled by light i have not written by light so distance traveled by light in one year this is what this is light year one light year is equal to what the distance traveled by the light in one year is known as one light year now what is the next question children that what do you understand by the statement that the star is 8 light years from the earth so one now just we have to write that how much one light year is equal to so one light year is equal to 9.4 <coughs> Six into ten raised to power twelve kilometers. Yes. So one light year is equal to how much? It is nine point four six into ten raised to power twelve kilometers. Now they are asking that if a star is eight light years far, if a star, if a star is eight light years away, eight light years away, then what will happen, children? Obviously. 9.4 into 10 raised to power 12 kilometer into 8. So, whatever will be the answer will be the uh, answer for this question. It will come approx. Calculate this one, isn't it? Now we'll move to the last question. I, I do not want to dust the board again now. So, I just want to fit that question in that small uh, space which is left over there. So now come to the question number fifteen, or answer number fifteen. So the radius of Jupiter is eleven times the radius of the Earth. Calculate the ratio of the volume of Jupiter and the Earth. Uh, but after this, one more question is left, and so I won't be able to write and fit in this. So definitely, I'll have to rub this. And uh, if we calculate this. It will come around 7.6 into 10 to the power 13 kilometer, something like that. So please calculate this. Uh, it is correct. And uh, this was our question number 14. Now we'll talk about the last two questions. That is question number 15 and question number 16. So please note this. We'll move to the next questions. So now we'll talk about the next answer now, and this is answer number sixteen. So the question is: uh, Bujo made the following sketch of the solar system. Is the sketch correct? If not correct, let me see the sketch now. What the sketch he has drawn? So, okay, this is a sketch, uh, but this one is the last question. That means we were supposed to do the question number fifteen, and now I've started answer number sixteen. So let it be; doesn't matter. First we'll solve this, and then we'll solve the fifteen uh, question. So question number sixteen is a sketch is given over here, and we have to find out that whether the sketch drawn over here is correct or not. So it is not correct. Uh, so what is the first problem over here? Uh, so the first problem which I can see over here. is the position of mars and venus is interchange so we'll write also the position of it's not correct so what is the problem position of mars and venus is not correct next let me see next uh, is even the position of the uranus and neptune is also not correct 
so position of uranus and neptune is also not correct children and the asteroid belt is also not drawn correctly here the asteroid belt is drawn uh, is drawn between jupiter and saturn yes it is drawn between jupiter and saturn but actually it is present between where it is present it is present between mars and jupiter so three things are wrong in this sketch first of all the position of the mars and venus is incorrect second is the position of uranus and neptune is also incorrect in this sketch sketch and the third one is the asteroid belt now we all know we have discussed this thing enough uh, many a times that the presence of asteroid belt is where it is in between the mars and jupiter it is not between the jupiter and saturn so it has to be between the mars and the jupiter the asteroid belt the white belt is present between the mars and jupiter where the uh, these metallic rocky objects move in the fixed orbit and there are many uh, you know asteroids like it is more than 7 lakh uh, uh, asteroids 70 lakh asteroids sorry not 7 uh, asteroids are moving around there you no know? and uh, uh, these Uh, are often called as the minor planets. Also, it can be very small, can be of one kilometer, can be very big. So uh, these asteroids are moving between the Mars and Jupiter. So the asteroid belt is between Mars and Jupiter, not between the Jupiter and Saturn. So this was our last question. Now we have left one question. That is question number fifteen, children. So now we'll talk about question number fifteen. So uh where is the question number 15 earth and jupiter uh question number 15 is the radius of jupiter is 11 times the radius of the earth <coughs> okay the radius is given the radius is the radius of the earth is uh, jupiter is 11 times more than that of the earth calculate the ratio of the volume volumes of jupiter and the earth and how many earth can jupiter accommodate so they have given the radius of jupiter so the radius suppose radius of earth is r dash and radius of jupiter is 11 r why because it is 11 times more than the ratio of and then the radius of the earth so radius of earth is r dash and the radius of jupiter is 11 r now we have to find the volume so volume we all know that all the planets are spherical so we'll apply the formula of volume of sphere so volume of sphere is what children it is 4 by 3 4 by 3 pi r cube we know this now now we have to find out the ratio so what we will do for finding the ratio we will say volume of jupiter by volume of earth So now we will place the value in this volume of Jupiter by volume of Earth. So what is uh, the volume of Jupiter? Four by three pi. And what is the value of R? It is eleven cube. Eleven R cube, isn't it? Now, when we talk about Earth, what will be there? Four by three pi R cube. So all these values will be cut. 
4 pi by 3 and this one will be cut and that we can segregate as 11 cube and r cube upon r cube. So, even this will be cut. Now, what is left is equal to 11 cube and 11 cube is equal to what 1331. So, how many uh, now the last part is that how many balls uh, how many earths can be accommodated. So, it will be 1331 these many balls can be accommodated or these many earths can be accommodated in the surface of the Jupiter. What was the question children the radius of earth is given and whatever is there uh, it is not given like we have assumed this as r dash. So, whatever is the radius of earth. Uh, the, the radius of the Jupiter is 11 times more than that. So, r dash for the earth and 11 times more. So, 11 r we have taken radius. Now, volume of sphere will be doing. So, what is the volume of sphere that is 4 by 3 pi r cube. Now, you have to find the ratio of Jupiter's to earth. So, volume of Jupiter by volume of earth. So, just we have placed the form value in the formula we have got only one value that is the 11 r. So, that is the radius of the Jupiter. So, when we write the values here 4 by 3 pi in r cube we will place the value 11 r cube. Everything will be cut off only 11 cube will be left and 11 cube is equal to 1331. So, this will be the number of the uh, actually 113 upon 1 upon 1 also because here 1 is left now nothing is there that means 1 is left. So, uh, these many balls are uh, these many balls can be accommodated. So, children this these were all the questions which were taken from NCERT definitely we will talk about few more questions which are not given in the NCERT, but will be very helpful to understand the concept also. So, that is all with this NCRT, NCRT questions of the lesson stars and the solar system. Thank you.